nice to see you today. When I opened my Bible this morning, I opened it to Proverbs 28. This was one of my pastor's favorite uh, verses that he would just speak at the drop of a hat. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as lions. That's Proverbs 28, verse 1. We are to be bold. I honestly think that all this uh, problems that we're having and these perverse laws and things that are being debated in um, having our country in a division over are because the Christians have not been bold. Somehow or another, we have decided that uh, love means tolerance. And no one should ever tolerance wrong. We love people, not evil actions not actions that hurt, and not um, things that are blatantly wrong. So, verse 2 says, For the transgression of a land, many are the princes, the leaders thereof. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state shall be prolonged. A poor man that oppresses the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaves no food. They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. And this is um, where my little talk is this morning. Is that even though we are commanded to love one another and to love our neighbor as ourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself also means taking up the cause of your neighbor. And it says, they that forsake the law praise the wicked. And we should never be praising the wicked. And we should get our courage up and get our boldness up when we know that we are in the right. God is a God of justice and righteousness. And justice means that people are not hurt. They are not, um, their things are not stolen, getting back to the 20 eternal words of God, commonly known as the Ten Commandments, written on the stone by the finger of God. And in case uh, you wonder why I keep saying it that way, is because it is His law and His word. And when we go against that, we're going against the way that he made things to work. And he made us, and I don't think he made any mistakes. Man can make lots of mistakes. I've made many, many, many in my lifetime. But God knows what he's doing. So his word should be listened to. And if you weigh the ones that go his way and the ones that go the other way, I'm not talking about the people who claim and then act differently than what they're talking and saying they profess. I'm talking about the people who are willing to humble themselves under God 
and go his way. And when they fall flat, they ask for forgiveness. And the scriptures tell us that he's a forgiving and merciful God, that he's very long-suffering. And we just um, learn and get better. So, the f evil that forsake the law, the evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. This is one of the blessings of um, communing with God and God cares about all of us. He listens. And he especially listens to the prayer for forgiveness. But he listens to all of it. And those that cry out to him, he will hear them. And if they want to listen to him, it says here, the ones that seek him understand all things. I, for one, would like to have a lot of understanding and knowledge, but this is one history, and this history takes us from Adam, the, the creation of Adam, and it'll even take us all the way to a glimpse of what happens when um, this age is over and we have a whole new age. Now, this may be new to some people listening to it, that this book is a really good history book. It's been proved by the uh, digs and the things that they dig up. Uh, they find proof of uh, these things that parallel some of this, the stones and the writings that um, they dig up from other places. I believe it. And by believing it, I have been, my whole entire life has been changed for the better. I have found these promises in here to be true. I found that um, I do have a, a helper. And I have had many miracles. I had a deaf ear, a ear that had been deaf for 10 years. And a... Um, certain evangelist man who was well known for praying and, and uh, healing uh, prayed and my deaf ear heard. It's still hearing. It's my best ear now. And um, so I do. I believe this book. And as I have lived through the years and interacted with so many of these uh, different denominations and different, I have found out that what they trip over is words. Through the centuries, wording changes. And a lot of people cannot read the King James Version because the wording is the these and the thous and the rebuketh and uh, that and he trusteth and that type of thing because of the wording and I do I look at all of the new translations however some of them are not good they're not accurate so it is good if you're going to go for um, a modern translation which does make it so much easier for people in this day and time those that grew up and spent many many years listening to bible um bible school and uh, the sunday and sabbath schools and that uh they, we've learned and so you can just read this and know know that uh what a certain word or thing means however for the new and for the modern young person they can trip over these words. And at the same time, people have made uh, sacred and uh, 
words mean things they really don't. The word church means congregation. Literally, the congregation of God. The ecclesia, the called out ones, the congregation. The called out ones like the um, nation of Israel because of the promise that was made to Abraham for his, his children. They were called out of Egypt, out of slavery. They're the called out ones. So Israel was a called out one. In modern days time, we could have called them a church, but the word church just means um, the congregation. The Israelites were the congregation in the wilderness. Now those who sit in, in our church houses, um, we're the congregation of God. And Jesus is the head of our congregation. We are one congregation all over the world. So the words people have problems with and um, they've made things, tabernacle means dwelling place, house, dwelling place. And when it says that um, the tabernacle was uh, the temple, the tabernacle was in Jerusalem, the big fancy building. It just meant that it was the dwelling place of God and because of that in the Holy of Holies. They had the Ark of the Covenant, and um, that was his dwelling place with them. But when Jesus came and died on the cross, the curtain to that dwelling place, that Holy of Holies, was rent. And his, the Holy Spirit was given to those of us now, that Holy Spirit that was in the tabernacle and which is the Holy Spirit of God, um, it, we became the dwelling place of God by the Holy Spirit. And that's what happened. And now our church buildings are buildings where we congregate. And that is what the word Synagogue means, it means meeting place. It doesn't mean temple or any of that. The word synagogue means meeting place. So those of you who um, like to learn new things and like to understand what they're reading and not just be surface or hear what someone else has said, you can find you can find these words. You just type them in, whatever your server is, Google or whatever. You type the word in, and it will tell you the meaning of it. So this will help you um, as you're reading, and it will let you know that there have been theologies and doctrines given around words. The uh, Holy Ghost, the word ghost means spirit. So the Holy Ghost means the Holy Spirit. So I hope that was informative to you. And I hope that um, as I do each time, that I am going to encourage and maybe pique your interest to pick up the Bible, it's very neglected. So I hope that uh, today's little message on the wicked flee where no man pursues and the righteous are as bold as lions. And I hope those of you who are believers will understand that you are righteous our righteousness is of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. 
He is our righteousness. So, we can be bold as lions. We have the truth. We know the truth. We need to be strong and stand on that truth. Because love does not allow someone else to hurt, to destroy, to um, make chaos. And we should stand no matter what's going on. Because it is not love to capitulate and let wickedness keep growing. So I bid you have a wonderful day. Seek God. Cry out to Him. For He will hear you. And He will help you in whatever your problem is. He will hear your cry. The scriptures tell us that we will find him when we seek him with all our heart let your day be full of the peace and joy that comes by dwelling in the tabernacle which is the house of almighty god